It's Gran Turismo 5, a driving game with cars. I figured that given the amount of time it took them to make this game, the cars would have just been replaced by spaceships. And for a long time it felt like Gran Turismo 5 would never come out. And when it did, we'd all be living in the future as depicted by Omega Boost. Flying robots around in space while shooting laser beams. It's another one of Polyphony Digital's games. I was not letting that car pass me. I drive like a jerk, I admit it. If you've ever watched Classic Game Room before, you know I'm a huge fan of the Gran Turismo series and have been playing it since the first one in 98. I love it like I love Star Wars. Well, maybe not that much, but I really like this series. And like Star Wars, after I was left waiting an inexplicably long time after Return of the Jedi for a new movie, my expectations became extremely high. And we all know what happened with the next Star Wars movie. So does Gran Turismo 5 meet my expectations and live up to the series' potential and reputation for excellence? <music> to accurately and quickly describe this game, it just needs a theme song. And it goes like this. I love cars more than people, more than dogs. I love cars more than you. Gran Turismo 5 is about loving cars. Loving cars. Treating them like objects to be worshipped. Cared for, nurtured, polished, and loved. Sometimes a little too much. There's times when you want this game to start acting more manly. And when you finally get past all of the counterintuitive menus and relaxing smooth jazz, it does. It rocks you like a blizzurricane, which is a combination of a blizzard and a hurricane. Which is very manly, but just like a blizzurricane, once your race is over, it suddenly becomes calm, serene, and tranquil. Gran Turismo 4 had Van Halen. Gran Turismo 5 has butterflies. Van Halen, more than symbol, butterflies. So stylistically, I think they took a step backwards from Gran Turismo 4, making the series seem more pretentious than it needs to be. But GT has always been about fun, cars, and excellent controls. And in that respect, Gran Turismo 5 is an improvement. And as we embark on a five-part review of Gran Turismo 5, I'll take you through most aspects of this gigantic video game, which is like the JRPG of racing games. It will devour your life if you give it the chance. It takes untold hours to experience everything that Gran Turismo 5 has to offer. And while at times it feels unfinished, unpolished, and somewhat confusing, it's an excellent, well-made driving game that gives you a ton of features as well as customization options, and is one worthy of the Gran Turismo name that should please fans of the series. But it's also not perfect. Not as perfect as it should have been. So moving beyond the menus and the music, which are well produced, but I just don't think they fit the game, my biggest real complaint is the leveling up system that locks you out of features which you should have gotten immediately when you bought the game. And as a new player, you're left unsure what is a feature in the game and what is unlockable. For instance, after two weeks of playing the game, I know that I haven't unlocked damage yet, but at some point do I unlock the cockpit view for all of the used cars? It seems odd that half of the vehicles in the game have a cockpit view while the others don't. That seems unfinished, and that seems sloppy for them. So for the 2002 Skyline, you're left with the same camera perspectives that you would have in Gran Turismo 4, which are certainly playable. And I'm not one to harp on graphics, but there's also inconsistencies between vehicles, like the used TVR looks less polished than the new Ferrari. In short, it is more of the same. Gran Turismo 5 is like Gran Turismo 4, with better graphics and a heavier emphasis on multiplayer. And that's what I wanted. In fact, that's what I expected from Gran Turismo 5. I just expected it to be released as a launch title for the PlayStation 3. Please don't tell me they waited this long to add 3D, because nobody cares. What I do like are the cars and the racing. There's a wide variety of vehicles in the game, which I'll cover more in depth in part 2. But of note is the care and attention paid to classic cars, as well as some premium marquee brands like Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Bugatti. 
many of which you can't buy outright, but have to wait until they appear in the used car market. Kind of like what they did with Gran Turismo on the PSP. And while I can't say that I'm personally satisfied with the track selection in the game, because I'm not, it's more than just about any other game will give you. And probably good enough, although as someone who's played every Gran Turismo game, I have my favorite courses. Some of which, like Trial Mountain, Deep Forest, are in this game, others like Grindelwald, and a few from Gran Turismo 4 are not. But maybe they're unlockable, I don't know. I'm eventually going to unlock everything, it's just gonna take some time. It'll take you some time. As this is a Gran Turismo game, you know how it works. You start off with something like an RX-7 or Mazda Miata, and eventually buy cars to work your way through the game, until you're driving some ridiculously fast supercars and Formula One racers. So in the next parts of the review, we'll cover more of the race types, car selection, track selection, special features like kart racing, NASCAR, and rally, as well as multiplayer. It's Gran Turismo 5, a beast of a game. See you in part two. What level unlocks the Mach 5 from Speed Racer? <laughs>